Sesame Street, Dark Crystal, Fraggle Rock, The Muppets. What have they all got in common? They're Muppets. That and Jim Henson, obviously. Let's take a look at The Storyteller. <laughs> Hello, welcome to The Bottled Imp. My name is Ken Boyter and this is a fancy review show. Now, before we begin, we just want to take a little bit of time just to say thank you so much for everybody that's watched the episodes, our previous episodes, and for the people that have subscribed and that have left comments. It, it's really encouraging for us um, to see the you know, the small following that we have growing each time we do one of these videos. We're going to be doing lots more, obviously, um, so we just want to say thank you very much. Now, let's crack on with the review. Woohoo! <laughs> when I first saw Jim Henson's The Storyteller, I was 15, and to be honest, it blew my mind. The premise is really, really simple. You have a storyteller, and in the first series, it's played by the wonderful John Hurt, telling us stories. What could be simpler? In the second series, it's four episodes of the Greek mythology, and in this case, the storyteller is played by the magnificent Michael Gamborn. Now, the first series, that is all about European folk tales, and there's nine stories in total. And both series, they actually follow the more traditional format of storytelling, i.e. verbally stories being passed down from one generation to the next. Now this framing of a storyteller, an old storyteller sitting by the fireside telling the audience his stories, and in this case being interrupted by his dog, is so effective. It's the interaction between his dog, and in this case it's played by Jim Henson, uh, not Jim Henson, sorry, it's played by his son Brian Henson, and it's basically the dog from Fraggle Rock is so warm to watch. It's the, the interaction is beautiful. And John Hurt's performance is superb. He really draws you into each story. And he's wise, he's warm, he's charming. And, you know, sometimes he can be a little bit cheeky, which just adds to the whole charming nature of the series. Now... Each episode is superbly written, and it, they're written by Anthony Mangella, and that's of the English patient uh, fame. And it really is a glorious achievement. The characters really crackle on screen. Each character, the, the dialogue is so well perfected. It's really economical in the way that he gets the dialogue to interact with actually the visuals that he's, he's writing about. Um, it's definitely charming, it's definitely exciting, and it's definitely believable. And in a fantasy genre, that, to me, is one of the first things you need to do. You need to set up that the world that you're entering into is very believable. And by God, this is certainly seeped in fantasy. The production values are really top-notch. And remember, this is over 20 years ago, and they were using a mixture of live acting, puppetry, and animation. I don't think there was any computer generated help here. If there was, it, it isn't like what we see today, which sometimes can be a little bit too slick. This really adds, again, I keep using this word charm, but, but that to me is one of the main factors why I really do like this series. Um, and looking back on it, I mean, I watched them very recently and they still hold up, the special effects still hold up today. Um, and I just think that, you know, nowadays that you can get too slick with the special effects. And the other thing, that, that the way they employed the special effects was they were used in a way that serviced the story. They didn't think, right, how can we get these special effects in and create stories around special effects? It was that the special effects serviced the story. So again, that really helps for the production values. Um, the other thing is I really liked is that the, the, there's just something really... Um, sorry, I've lost my train of thought. Do we have to cut here? <laughs> keep going. Um, but we'll keep going. So sure. what was the last point you made? It was about... Uh, do doesn't look dated. The special effects are still relevant. So start from a, that natural... Just, yeah... So I have to say what we... Uh, 
So the special effects really don't look dated whatsoever. Okay, granted, there might be one or two special effects that, you know, the animation might be a little bit dodgy by today's standards, but please don't let that put you off. One word sums up Jim Henson's The Storyteller, and that is charming. Well, also enchanting, captivating, bewitching, bewitching, <laughs> if I can say it, beguiling. You get my point. There's lots of lovely things about this TV show. I really love it. It to me it's going to be the closest thing to perfection if you want to see a collection of short stories basically um in the fantasy genre it really is a, a, a wonderful world that you want to inhabit and you want to, to to exist in and really find out more about it um there's a very special fondness i have for the storyteller for three reasons one is i used to watch this with my mum and it really was i think it was on a sunday and it really was that weekly treat if you like that you really wanted to sit down and cozy up on the couch and 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 kind of it's great family viewing it was an experience rather than just another television show the other influence it had on me and why it's very fond to me is that it had a direct influence on my love of stories and consequently you know I I started writing stories years ago and I'm writing a book at the moment and it uses that same device the storyteller telling stories myths and legends to his audience I love that concept there's something really honest and real and I don't know earthy and human about telling a story just verbally human to human you know that type of situation just that around the campfire there's something really primeval about that and something honest about it and the other great thing about these stories is they do have a moral in each story and again that's handled with great skill it's not hit over the head you know obvious you know you must do this or this will happen to you it's just nicely you know there in the background and as a kid um it's something that you do tap into you may not understand it but i I like going back i think always a timeless classic and i would put them this into being a timeless classic is that you can go back and watch them and and get new layers out of them and so obviously as you grow older your understanding of the world becomes better hopefully and you then um can see the morals there and think oh yeah as a kid i didn't quite understand that but now i do and the third reason why it's very fun for me is that i then passed on my joy and my passion for for the storyteller to my own son he was about 12 years old and we watched it together and it was a great again a great experience that we really enjoyed together and again it didn't seem outdated the pacing wasn't outdated you know it kept his attention and so i just thought wow you know if it can do that still you know over 20 years after it was made then it's definitely as i say definitely a timeless classic um i did do a spot of research um you'd be surprised to know (laughs) in doing this and uh you know because i just wanted to see what was being said about it and i was so joyous to say that um i actually that they did put the antimen gela did actually write them into short stories and yes i managed to track down the short story version now i've not read them um it wasn't that difficult actually to track it down (laughs) was on Amazon um, that's because they republished them uh, 2014 this edition was so I thought wow fantastic I have got my copy I hopefully will be doing a review of it I can't wait to read them so I just want to see you know that how well they've adapted them I'm sure they've done a fantastic job the other thing that I did notice is that it won three television awards one Emmy and two BAFTA awards and I thought yes it should have won more but I can see why uh, they did win awards and the final thing in my research was that there are a couple of graphic novels um, also that was uh, illustrated uh, I don't know when they did do them but I saw a few panels I've not seen them but I saw a few panels and again they look really good quality so if you're into graphic novels then obviously you can get the graphic novel so that's my review 
And uh, my final thoughts are, well, it's pretty obvious. I absolutely love the storyteller. You'll love the storyteller. Your kids will love the storyteller. It's so beautifully crafted, so inspiring. And all I can just say is make yourself a big mug of hot chocolate, get some marshmallows, get some more chocolate, snuggle up onto the sofa and sit back and lose yourself in the wonderful storyteller and all of his wonderful stories that he weaves. <laughs> As always, thank you so much for watching. Please leave any comments that you may have in the comments box, obviously, uh, about this episode or anything else that we have reviewed, or indeed if you'd like us to review anything else in the future. Um, please subscribe if you haven't done so already. If you have, thank you very much. And remember, you can follow us on Twitter at The Bottled Imp, or we actually do now have a Facebook page, which is The Bottled Imp. So please come and look at the uh, Facebook page and subscribe and all of that sort of stuff. Anyway, thank you very much, fellow imps. We'll see you on the next episode. <laughs> uh...